Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how children's mental addition and subtraction strategies should develop alongside their formal column addition and subtraction strategies between the ages of seven and nine. Column addition and subtraction are fabulous because they always work but sometimes they're really fiddly and it's much quicker to use a mental strategy. In this video, I'm going to explain two mental shortcut strategies for addition and four for subtraction. And I'll also talk about how we encourage children to invent and explain their own shortcut strategies for addition and subtraction. Finally, I'll introduce you to another YouTuber who's creating some fabulous problem solving videos for children that you might like to watch with your child. If you don't need this video, here's a link to your next one, which is about the foundations of multiplication. This video assumes that you can already do column addition and subtraction. If not, you should watch those videos before you try this one. OK, let's get started. Have a look at this addition. 498 plus 263. Now, of course, we could do that with column addition. And that's the beauty of column addition. It always works. But there's going to be quite a lot of exchanging going on here. So column addition is quite fiddly and it'd be very difficult to do this in your head. So how could you do this calculation in your head without writing anything down? Well, what about if we split this number 263 into 2 and 261? That's true, isn't it? 263 is 2 add 261. But why would we do that? Well, I'm doing that because I can see that if we add 2 to 498, we get 500. That becomes 500. And 500 add 261 is a calculation I can do in my head. That's 761. I'm going to show that with what we call an open number line. An open number line is just a line. Smaller numbers go on the left, larger numbers go on the right. When we looked at the number line before, it had sections on it and each step had to be the same size. We're not worrying about that now because doing that gets in the way. So we're starting at 498 and we're trying to add on 263. And what we're going to do is hop on 2 to get to 500 and then say, if I've added 2, I've got 261 left. And 500 add 261, I can do that's 761. So that's my answer. Let's try another one. See if you can see the shortcut this time. 699 add 88. Can you puzzle out the answer using this method? Well, if we use one of the 88 to fill to 700, we've 87 left. 700 add 87 is doable, that's 787. Let's show that with an open number line. We're starting at 699. We're going to hop on one to get to 700. We're trying to add 88. We've added one, so we've 87 still to add. And that becomes 787. Before moving on, I'm going to show you our first subtraction shortcut. Look at this calculation, 603 subtract 98. That's really tricky to do by column subtraction. Let's just look at it, 603 subtract 98, 3, subtract 8, we can't do, but we can't exchange a 10 because there isn't one. So we have to dig straight into the hundreds. That gives us 10 tens. Now we can exchange a 10, so that becomes 9 tens. And we've got 13 ones. 13 ones subtract 8 is 5. 9 tens subtract 9 tens is nothing. And 500 with no hundreds to subtract, so that's 505. That's really tricky and it's really easy to go wrong. What we're going to do for a mental strategy here is the reverse of what 
we did for subtraction just before. If we subtract 3 of the 98, we get to 600. Now, bigger numbers go on the right, so we're going to start with the 603 up here, and we're going to hop back subtracting 3. That gets us to 600. Now, we've subtracted 3, but there were 98 to subtract. So we still have 95 to subtract. 600 subtract 95, well that's 505, which is the same answer we got there. But this is pretty much doable in your head by the time you're about nine years old, if you know what you're doing. So we subtracted three to get to 600, then we said we had 95 still to subtract, 600 subtract 95. Now that's the trickiest part here. Some people would rather think, well, I'll subtract 100 and then add on 5 to subtract 95. That works too. If they're doing that, we can still notate it on the open number line. Just take that out. And they are going to hop back 100, subtract 100, and then add 5 back on to subtract 95 overall. So subtracting 100 took us to 500 and we added 5 back on, that took us to 505. And that introduces our next strategy, which is the bounce back strategy, where you add or subtract more than what you want to add or subtract because it's easier to do and then you make an adjustment. Let's have a look at that. So if we were doing a calculation like 268 add 99, what we're saying there with a the bounce back strategy is instead of trying to add 99, let's add 100 and subtract one. That's the same as adding 99. So we start with 268. We add 100 to get to 368 and we subtract one. That gets the answer of 367. And again, that would be a really tricky addition to do with column addition because of all the exchanging that's going on. It's much easier to think of it this way. All these strategies only work for certain numbers, unlike column addition and column subtraction, which work for all results. This one works when you can see a number that's easy to add or subtract, which we're just getting to, which is just above the one you've actually got to add or subtract. Let's look at it now with subtraction. Think about this one. 223 subtract 99. 223 subtract 99. Can you puzzle that out without doing a column subtraction? Column subtraction's horrible. Well, subtracting 99 is the same as subtracting 100 and adding one on. 223 to subtract 99 we're going to subtract 100 that's easy that's 123 and add 1 124 job done I said we were going to cover two strategies for addition and four for subtraction well we've covered two for addition and two for subtraction so we've just got a little bit of work on subtraction to do now the two strategies for subtraction we've looked at so far have been about subtraction as taking away. But subtraction can also be counting on or finding the difference, which is the same thing. And that gives us some great new mental shortcuts. Look at this problem. 403 subtract 398. Can you do it in your head? If you can, I bet you're not imagining a column subtraction because it's a really tricky one again. I bet you're seeing the difference between those two numbers. And the difference is 5. On a number line, we set this up differently. You just need the 398 and the 403 because we're setting it up as a difference. If we were setting it up as a takeaway, we'd start with the 403 and try and hop back 398, which we could do, 
using our last strategy by hopping back 400 and adding on two. But that's not what we're doing now. We're looking at the difference between them because it's easier. Difference between those numbers? Well, if you can't see it's five straight away, it can be useful just to set up a stopping off point of 400. There we're adding two and there we're adding three. So overall we're adding five. Therefore, the answer is five. Let's try a harder one. How about 502 subtract 298? 502 subtract 298. Now that's also going to be really tricky to do by column subtraction. Essentially, whenever you've got a calculation that's really tricky to do by column subtraction or column addition, there's going to be a really good shortcut. And usually there's more than one. So here again, we could use bounce back subtracting 300 and adding on two. But we're looking at difference just now, which also works 298, 502. And I would explain that to children by using two stopping off points, 300 and 500. And we're hopping on two there. We're hopping on 200 there and we're hopping on to here. So overall the answer is 204, which is of course what you should get by whichever method you choose. The final mental subtraction strategy I'm going to explain today is another differencing strategy and it's about shifting the difference. And it requires a new insight, which is that if you take any subtraction and you add the same number to both the numbers in the subtraction, the answer stays the same. And that happens because of the way we set it up as a difference. If we've got two numbers we're subtracting, we're just finding the difference between them. If we add the same amount to both numbers, the difference stays the same. That distance there is going to be the same as that distance there if we've added the same to both numbers. That is something a lot of people have never thought about. So it may take you a moment to get your head around it, but your child might be using that strategy and be trying to explain it to you. So it's helpful if you've got some idea of what they might be talking about. It's one of the methods that's taught at school. So how do we use it? Again, if we consider a calculation like 463, subtract 197. 463 subtract 197. Well, we can find it through bounce back and we can find it through differencing, but here's how this works. If we just add three to both numbers, 466 subtract 200. From what I've just said, we get the same answer. The difference between the numbers has stayed the same because we've increased both numbers by three. So the distance between them stays the same. And that is easy because that is 266. Just try one more of those. Let's try 893 subtract 99. 893 subtract 99. That's one that's gonna be a real headache as a column subtraction. But if we increase both numbers by one, 894, subtract 100, it becomes very easy because it's just 794. This video is not just about teaching you those specific mental addition and subtraction shortcuts. It's about introducing you to the open number line because if your child is becoming creative with their maths, which is what we want, they will come up with strategies that you've not thought of before. Children do that. So I've been introducing the open number line because it's going to help you communicate with your child. If they've come up with a strategy, they should be able to tell you which number they're starting with and which number they're adding on to that number. So we mark the number they're starting with and then we should be able to mark the hops, whatever hops they choose to make to map their thinking and it'll help you better understand what they're doing and their thinking, and it'll help them better understand it too. And it'll help them become a teacher because they'll start to be able to explain their thinking instead of just being confused by their own thinking.
And with subtraction, we need two ways of setting this up. They may be using a takeaway strategy, in which case we start with the number that they are taking away from and we hop back, although we may use a bounce back strategy. So we may hop back and forwards to get to the answer. And you can now notate that for them and help them unpack their own thinking. But with subtraction, they may also use a differencing strategy. And if they're doing that, you need to mark the number they're subtracting from and the number they're subtracting and help them explain what they're doing to find the difference. It's in exploring and developing their mental shortcut strategies that some children become more fluent than others with maths. People wonder if maths ability is genetic. This is yet another reason why it's not. What you see when you observe families is that parents who've got these strategies share them with their children without being aware they're doing it, just in sideways discussions about calculation. But where the parents have never had these strategies, of course, they don't get shared at home. So we're relying on the school. But if you're home educating, you need to understand these strategies and you need to work with your child on them. And you absolutely can. I will create a mental addition and subtraction worksheet to go with this video. I will make sure I catch up with my worksheet once when I've completed this series of 20 videos before I move on to the next series, which is for number four, nine to 11 year olds. Okay, now I want to make a recommendation. My videos are all for parents about how to teach the core of maths really, really well. But it also matters to have some fun with maths. And I'm absolutely delighted that another YouTuber has appeared in lockdown who is doing that brilliantly well. And that's Gareth Metcalf and his YouTube channel is IC Maths. The minute he's managing to post two videos a day, which is incredible. So there's lots of stuff there. I'm going to recommend his problem solving video on boys, girls and children for some fun at this stage. If you're going to follow the link, which I'll give in just a moment, Please make sure you've subscribed to my channel and clicked on the bell so you can find this channel again. Here's a link now. You're looking for this lesson, but starting at four minutes 38 in for the problem solving activity. If you start at the beginning of the lesson, you'll see even more mental addition and subtraction strategies that children do when you let them be creative. So if you've had enough of that, bypass that. But if you're loving it, do watch that and possibly go back to his previous lesson as well. So your takeaways from this video are six mental addition and subtraction strategies. Here they are. And also an ability to use the open number line to notate whatever it is your child is thinking and help them to unpack their thinking about their own strategies. And hopefully you'll enjoy Gareth's videos too. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments. I want to know. If you think the videos could be better, I would love feedback. Tomorrow's video will be on the foundations of multiplication where among other things, we'll be talking about tables. Stay well, bye for now.